Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which is the best description of Namasya mobile app? It is an app developed exclusively for the benefit of Nalco's MSE vendors. It is an electronic marketplace providing a platform to connect aqua farmers and the buyers. It is an app to log in and track the grievances of the consular services offered by the embassies in foreign locations. It is an app where citizens can pay homage and contribute financially to the bereaved families of the soldiers. Which of these statements best describe about Namasya mobile application? The answer to this is, it is an app developed exclusively for the benefit of Nalco's MSC vendors. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Namasya mobile application. From the preliminary examination point of view, remember Nalco is one of the Navaratna companies which comes under the administrative control of Ministry of Mines. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section, what is this Navaratna public sector enterprise? What are the different classifications? How are they categorized? Please put it on the comment section. Now let's understand what is this Namasya mobile application. We have the National Aluminium Company. This, as we have discussed, is a Navaratna company. It has multiple vendors. These vendors are nothing but the suppliers. They provide some of the important equipment. They might also provide some of the important resources that which is required for Nalco. So basically, in order to make sure that there is an exchange of information between Nalco and vendors, they have created this platform. So what would happen? The vendors would get all the information about the registration process items, that which is required from Nalco. And at the same time, the vendor development and training is provided under the Namasya mobile application. So items from the vendors, which will be supplied to Nalco, how it has to be supplied, what is the technical specifications, all of this will be given under the Namasya mobile application. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following pairs. We have operation on one side, the objective of this operation on the other side. Samudra Setu, national effort to repatriate Indian citizens from overseas during the COVID-19 pandemic. Pawan, military operation undertaken by the Indian peacekeeping force to take control of the Jaffna Peninsula. Maitri, rescue and relief mission in quack hit Nepal. Which of the above pairs is or correctly matched? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. What is this operation Samudra Setu? Indian citizens traveled world over. But during COVID-19, most of the operations were suspended. Air operations were suspended. So, all those Indian citizens who were stuck in some other country who wanted to come back to India were not able to come back to India. So, one of the missions undertaken by the government of India to bring back the Indian citizens back to its soil is the Samudra Setu operation. So, the national effort to repatriate Indian citizens from overseas during the COVID-19 pandemic is the Operation Setu. Then we have Operation Pawan where military operations was undertaken by the Indian peacekeeping operations were in Sri Lanka. So there was the LTTE which had captured certain region. There was large scale violence that was perpetuated in Sri Lanka to bring a close end to this one of the operations undertaken by the Indian forces was in Sri Lanka called as Operation Pawan. Then we have Operation Maitri. When did this happen? This happened in the year 2015 where it happened in Nepal. A big earthquake strike Nepal. India did provide all the resources that was required and during this period an operation to support Nepal was called as Operation Maitri which is nothing but the friendship relationship that was existing enhanced during this process. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Operation Samudra Setu. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to Manda Buffalo, which of the following statements is are correct? They are found in the Western Ghats. The Manda are resistant to parasitic infections and are less prone to diseases. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is two only. 
Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Manda Buffalo. So the National Bureau of National Genetic Resources has recognized the Manda Buffalo as one of the unique breeds of buffaloes in India. Where are they found? They are not found in the Western Ghats, but they are found in the Eastern Ghats, where in the Korapat district of Odisha. So kindly remember, they are found in Eastern Ghats, they are found in Odisha, and this can be very important from the preliminary examination point of view. What are the features of this buffalo? As shown in the image, these buffaloes are small in size. They have a unique coat color of ash gray and gray with copper color hair. Both the male and the female of this breed are used in plowing as well as other agricultural activity. So what are the unique features? These mandas are less prone to diseases and are used for plowing in southern Odisha. They give birth to a calf every 1 point or 2 years for up to 20 years. The average milk yield of these buffaloes is 2 to 2.5 litre at a time and these buffaloes can live, produce and reproduce at low or no input system which is why it has been identified as one of the unique breed of buffaloes in India by the National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resources. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements. It is a landlocked country. It is bordered by Russia to the east and northeast and by Ukraine to the south. It is not a member of the European Union. The above statements describe is it Poland, Slovenia, Belarus or Lithuania? The answer to this is Belarus. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Belarus. So you can expect one of the map based questions because country of Belarus has been in use and UPSC can ask questions about Belarus. So when we speak about Belarus, where is it? It is in this part. To the northeast as well as to the east, what we have is Russia. To the southern part, what we have is Ukraine. As we see from the image, it is a landlocked country. It has no access to the ocean water and at the same time, it is not part of the European Union. So these are the countries which are part of the European Union. And when you look into these countries, Belarus is not mentioned under the countries which are part of European Union. So the answer to this would be Belarus. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following pairs. Region, well known for the production of Kinnur, Arakanat, Mewat, Mango, Coromandel, Soya Bean. Which of the above pairs is or correctly matched? The answer to this is none. Why? That is because when you look into Kinnur, where is it? It is in the Himachal Pradesh. Is it known for Arcanet? No. It is known for apples and not Arcanet. So this would be a wrong option. Now if you look into the second option, Mewat, where is it? It is in Haryana. Is it known for mangoes? No. It is known for agriculture with allied activities as well. But in this region, mango is not grown. So the second option is wrong. So when 1 and 2 are eliminated, what we have is only 3. Is Coromandel known for soya bean? No once again. Yes, there is presence of rice, pulses, sugarcane, so on and so forth. But it is not known for soya bean as some of the regions where maximum soya bean is grown is in the state of Maharashtra as well as in Madhya Pradesh. Since Coromandel is not known for soya bean, this is also a wrong pair. So the answer to this would be none. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is PMFME scheme. What is this scheme all about? This was launched under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. So we have the Pradhana Mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprises, which is nothing but a centrally sponsored scheme. What is a centrally sponsored scheme? Basically, we have two types of scheme. One is a central sector scheme. The other is a central sponsored scheme. What is a central sector scheme? It is a scheme where the entire onus of financial responsibility is undertaken by the central government. 100% of the finances is undertaken by the government. So there is no expenditure. That which is undertaken by the state governments, complete financial dependence 
complete financial expenses will be borne by the central government but if it is a centrally sponsored scheme a certain percentage of it is also contributed by the state government since it is a centrally sponsored scheme the share of the expenditure is as follows 60 is to 40 between the central government and the state governments and union territories with the legislature 90 is to 10 between the central and the northeastern and the himalayan states 100 percent central assistance for the union territories without legislature so basically for all those which are not part of the northeastern and the himalayan states they will be bearing about 60 is to 40 where 60 percent will be contributed by the central government about 40 percent will be contributed by the state government so what is this scheme all about this wants to enhance the competitiveness of existing individual micro enterprises who are engaged in the unorganized sector of the food processing industry we have the food processing industry this can be divided into organized as well as the unorganized sector so those who are currently in the unorganized sector they will require technical upgradation they will require assistance from the government of india so that they are part of the formalization when it comes to the food processing industries so the government has earmarked about 10000 crores to benefit about 2 lakh micro food processing enterprises which aims to provide the technical assistance, financial assistance so that they are groomed, so that they take up the entrepreneurship skills and bring the unorganized sector in the food processing industry over a period of time to the organized sector. So assistance would be provided to micro food enterprises, assistance would be provided to the farmer producer organizations, self-help groups as well as cooperatives where the entire supply chain of the food processing industry is taken into picture. So what would the government do? The government would provide financial assistance, technical assistance, business support for upgradation of these existing micro food processing enterprises so that they can in the near future contribute for the greater success of this food processing industry. As of now, there are approximately 25 lakhs unorganized food processing units. They contribute to about 74% of the employment in the food processing sector and 66% of such units are located in the rural areas. So bringing them as part of the formal organized sector is one of the main mechanisms or the objectives of this very important scheme. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this fact of the day. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.